In this video, we're going to work on naming and drawing aldehydes and ketones. And so I have a structure drawn up here for you. If you pause the video, take a moment, uh, try to name this, and then come back and I'll go through the naming of it with you. Okay, so the first thing to notice when, um, when naming, the first thing to notice about naming this compound is you see this carbonyl group right here. Uh, that carbonyl group is key because it sort of reduces the number of family family uh, uh, groups it, that it could be. Uh, given that it has a carbonyl group, that carbonyl group is a, directly attached to a hydrogen, and on the other side, it is a big old R group. Um, this tells us that it has the general structure of R, C, double bond, O, H, and that general structure is one of an aldehyde. And so we are going to name this as an aldehyde. So being an aldehyde, it's going to end in Al, uh, which shouldn't be confused with an alcohol, which is Ol. So the A there is very important. It tells us it's an aldehyde. And now the next thing we need to do is figure out its parent name. Its parent name is the longest continuous carbon chain. It must contain the carbonyl carbon, which I've just underlined, so the longest chain must include that, and the carbonyl carbon in an aldehyde automatically gets carbon number one. And so going straight down the chain, we can see that we have four carbons in the chain, and so therefore uh, this is a butane derivative, uh, but when we use this um, uh, parent name in aldehydes, we drop the E in the process, and so this becomes a butanal. Um, now all we have to do is name the substituents on that chain. I see a group here, I see a group here, and both of those are methyl groups, and so what we're left with is 2, 3, and it's 2, 3. I have two of them, so I have to put the, the, the dye in there. So 2, 3, di methyl butanal. So here's another structure for us to name. I'll give you a moment, or pause the video and take a moment to name this structure, then come back and we'll go through it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is determine the family name. I see a carbonyl group. Um, I see on one side attached an H. On the other side, I see a big old R group. And so we have the general structure H, C double bond O, and an R group, and that's the general structure of an aldehyde. And so we know that this is an aldehyde, and so with that, um, we can determine the suffix or the family name is Al for our, uh, Al. And we know that then we need the longest continuous carbon chain that contains the aldehyde carbon, and so let's number that. The aldehyde carbon automatically gets number one. It gets the lowest number possible. That's carbon two and carbon three. Now we have two directions we could go. If we go the top way, we can get to six carbons. If we go down uh, this way, going this direction, we'll only get to five carbons. And so the way we've I've numbered it is the correct way to number it. So we have six carbons. Uh, that's a hexane. Um, uh, <clears throat> we drop the E when we uh, name an aldehyde in this case, and so that's a hexanal. Then the next thing we have to do is name the substituents. There's one substituent right there, that's an ethyl group, and that's on the three carbons, so we have three ethyl hexanal. Okay, so here's another structure to uh, attempt to name. Uh, take a moment and try to name that. Okay, so again, the first question I always ask myself when I'm naming a molecule is I have to determine the family. Um, I see a carbonyl group here. I see an R group over here and an R group over here, so the general structure 
is R, C double bond O, R, um, and so in that case, uh, that is representative of an, a ketone. So to name a ketone, as a ketone, we're going to end in O-N-E. And let me erase a few things here to clean it up a little bit so we can... So again, uh, this is a ketone, so it's going to end in O-N-E. I need to find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains uh, the ketone or the, I'm sorry, the carbonyl group, uh, at least that carbonyl carbon that I just underlined, and we want to give that carbon the lowest number possible. And so the way to do that is one, two, three, four, and at this point they're all going to, I'm going to add in one more carbon into the chain, it doesn't matter which way I go, it's going to give the same answer, but there's five. Uh, five would be a derivative of a pentane, and so when naming this a ketone, we drop the E just like with aldehydes, and we add that on as the parent name, and so this is a pentanone. Uh, with, key, with, with ketones, a little bit different in terms of naming in this regard, we have to mention where the carbonyl carbon is, on which, on which uh, carbon it's uh, located. And so we see that the carbonyl carbon's on the two carbon, and so that just tells us where the C double bond O is, so it's on the two carbon, so this is two pentanone. The last thing we have to do is name the substituents. I have one there and one up here. So that's two methyl groups. And so in this case, it's going to be 4,4-di-methyl-2-pentanone. Okay, now we can practice drawing molecules, so here's the one we can practice. Let's try drawing 3-hexanone. When I draw molecules, I again start on the right-hand side and work my way left, so I quickly see that this is a uh, ketone because of the own suffix, and so I can just go ahead and throw in a ketone, and I know it's going to have two R groups connected to it. I see that continuing moving left in the name, I see I have a hexanone. Uh, hex meaning I have a six carbons long, and the third carbon is going to contain this uh, carbonyl group, so I know this is carbon three right here. So I need six carbons total. There's carbons one and two, and I can go ahead and decorate them with hydrogens. And I need six total. Uh, so that's three, four, five, and six. There's no substituents, and so I can just fill in the rest with hydrogens. And this would be the proper drawing of 3-hexanone. Okay, let's go ahead and draw this structure, 2,2-dibromopentanal. Uh, Again, when I draw structures, I always start on the right-hand side and figure out what family it is. I see quickly that it's a, a aldehyde family because it ends in AL. Aldehydes have the general structure uh, that looks like this. I know an H is on one side, and on the other side is going to be the R group. It's a pent is the parent name, so that means it's five carbons long. Uh, the carbon I have there is carbon one. It's automatically number one. <laughs> and I just need to add in a couple more carbons. And so that's five carbons total. That's one, two, three, four, and five. I keep working my way to the left in the name, and I see I have a couple of substituents. They're both bromo groups, and they're both on the two carbon.
And so on the second carbon, I can add in a bromo group, another bromo group. That's the only substituents I have, so the rest of the uh, molecules or atoms attached are all hydrogens. So I just make sure I make sure all my carbons have four bonds, so all my hydrogens have one, bromines get one, oxygens get two, and carbons get four. And so there's the proper structure of 2,2-dibromopentanal.